Good morning. My name is Marguerite Ruers and I'm a writer of Canadian books for children and I'm thrilled that one of my newest books has been shortlisted for the Chocolate Lily Award which is the Children's Choice Award in BC. So I'm so happy that you will be reading and discussing the book and I thought I'd share a little bit about it with you before I read it. So as a writer, I used to live in the Yukon, and one of my friends was Ted Harrison, who was a very famous painter. And he allowed me to tell the story of how he became a Canadian citizen and how he became a famous painter. And then I moved to Salt Spring Island in BC, and Another very famous Canadian painter lives here on the same island. His name is Robert Bateman. And I loved his art. His art is so realistic and so gorgeous. I always wondered how he does that, how he can paint that way. So I asked if I could tell the story of how he became a very famous world known artist. And he gave me permission to tell his story. So it took me about two years of research to read everything I could, to watch every documentary, to talk to him, to ask him questions. And when I finished all my writing and my editing and my rewriting, I sent it to a publisher called Orca Books. They're right here in BC and they produced this gorgeous book was all the art that Robert Bateman himself did. Robert Bateman didn't paint the art specifically for the book. He allowed us to use any art he had already produced, although he did make some black and white sketches specifically for the book. So this is the story called Robert Bateman, The Boy Who Painted Nature. And I love the end pages of the book before it even starts. You can see a page of his real original sketchbook. And what I like best about that is that Robert Bateman told me, he said, make sure you tell all the kids that this dark stain, can you see it? Is where a seagull, girl, a seagull barfed on my sketchbook. So that is, it's called um, Krill, but that's where a seagull threw up on his book, on his sketchbook. So Robert Bateman, The Boy Who Painted Nature, was written by me, Marguerite Ruers, and all the artwork is by Robert Bateman, and Orca Book Publishers produced the book. Even when he was quite small, Bobby was in awe of nature. It's almost hard to realize that this isn't a photo, is it? It's a painting. While others played baseball, he scooped up tadpoles, studied their wriggly shapes and released them back into the pond so they could grow into fat frogs. Look at the red feathers on that bird's head, he said. He bought a field guide to help him identify the birds. He roamed a ravine, noticing the different greens of leaves. His mother bought him a paint box and he tried to get the colors just right. Bobby drew birds. He painted deer and squirrels, and even more birds. He painted this when he was 12 years old. Isn't that amazing? In school, he spent a lot of his time staring out of the window. He dreamt of traveling so he could see more wildlife from whales to wrens. As Bobby grew into Bob, he learned the names of plants and animals. He painted the shapes and patterns of the world around him. He carved wood into birds, noticing the details of feathers and form. He drew tracks of a deer 
and followed a rabbit's trail. As soon as he could, Robert traveled the world. He studied bears, owls, feathers, moss and wood that had been polished by waves. He painted penguins in Antarctica. and polar bears in the Arctic. In Africa, he observed lions. And elephants, he painted them as well so that others could see their splendor. Robert married and had a family. He became a teacher and all the while he painted. Soon princes and presidents wanted to own his paintings. To share the beauty of bears in a rainforest with more people, prints of his paintings were made. These prints showed nature seen through Robert's eyes to everyone, not just to those who could buy an original painting. And birds seemed to fly off his canvas right into the hearts of people all over the world. Robert brought animals to life for those who would never get to see them. Now Robert walks the forest with his grandchildren. He shows them the shape of a leaf the texture of bark. He tells them to pay attention to details of nature all around him. He picks up a feather and when his grandchildren notice its softness and curve, he helps them to draw and paint the beauty of nature. In the back of the book is a quote by Robert Bateman together with the panda bear painting. His quote says, I can't conceive of anything being more varied and rich and handsome than planet Earth. And its crowning beauty is the natural wor world. I want to soak it up, to understand it as well as I can and to absorb it. Then I like to put it together and express it in my paintings. This is the way I want to dedicate my work. And there he is working in his studio on Salt Spring Island, looking through the window at the bird feeder and all those birds and deer that visit him there. And then in the back is are two more pages that are a little bit of a biography that will give you some more details of Robert Bateman. And on my website, if you click on the book called Robert Bateman, The Boy Who Painted Nature, you will find even more details and pictures. So I hope that you have lots of fun reading this book and thank you for sharing it.